Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Now stoves, they're kind of my thing. So when I heard that Firebox was putting out a new stove, I got pretty excited. And then when Steve from Firebox reached out and said, hey, do you want to check out the Firebox Scout emergency stove? Maybe test it out and show it to your viewers on YouTube? Well... Firebox stove already produces two of the most popular outdoor stoves there are. They have their Gen 2 5 inch, both stainless steel and titanium. And of course, they're very popular in ultralight nano, again, both in stainless steel and titanium. So why make the Scout? That's a question many have asked. Why would Firebox make a stove like this? They already have two great stoves. And where does this one fit in? And basically it's an emergency stove. They wanted it to be used with a multitude of fuel options and they wanted it to be very affordable. Now we're gonna do what we always do on this channel. We're gonna take a good look at the stove. We're gonna detail the specs. I'm gonna show you guys how to use it effectively with different fuel types. And then we're gonna talk pros and cons because not every stove out there is perfect. We're gonna concentrate on it as an emergency stove. So let's get after it. So here is the basic stove kit. It comes in this nylon carry bag. We'll go ahead and get it out. There is our stove. We'll go ahead and take what we're calling the top lid and the bottom lid. My easiest way to put it. Dimensions are four and a half by four and a half by five. The burn chamber itself is four by four by four and a half. The weight of the stove alone is 5.4 ounces. Now you get a couple of things with the stove. Go ahead and pull them out here. This is if you get the performance kit, okay? If you pledged for the performance kit or you buy the performance kit, you'll get these extras. You always get the lids and the stove. If you add the performance kit, you get these positioning pins, very simple stainless steel pins. You get these crossbars. These crossbars are brand new because uh, Steve just sent them to me. These are the ones that I used in all of my testing, um, but they're a little different than the actual production models. This is the production model and he sent it along with the fire grate. If you add all this stuff together, you got 16.9 ounces. So as I said, it is made out of stainless steel. If you wanna buy just the stove, it's $19.99. If you wanna buy the whole thing you see here, $34.99. Pretty reasonable price really when you're looking at all the different things and we're gonna show how flexible this stove is. Now these lids do quite a bit. First off, they add a lot of stability. You can see that the stove itself is, I mean, it's strong, but you could bend it. I could bend it if I wanted to. If I put this on for packing, for example, I'm not going to be able to crush that at all. It also is a stand. You can either use it a stand like this to get it up off the ground and get a little more air to it. You can also invert this, okay, and drop it in, and you're basically balking off the bottom air holes. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. More than anything, these add a lot of stability. When you pop this in, it's stuck on there. Okay, so it really helps you keep the stove nice and stable. The cross stand is pretty simple. You just put it together and it pops right on. If you try to pop it right on, it won't work. You need to twist it like that and then slowly turn it into place. And the cool thing is this actually locks on. I mean, this is not coming off. The ends here kind of lock on. You can also take this off and lock them on in the corners here like this. And it'll allow you to put a pot on top for um, dry baking. If you want to use some of the accessories like the Trangia or uh, this multi-fuel plate, you just use these positioning pins here and you pick whatever level you want. So we'll just kind of randomly pick this level right here. And then you can drop in your multi-fuel plate and you can do it at any of these five levels. You can see you can move it up and down. That gives you a lot of flexibility depending on what you want to use. Now you can use a variety of fuels and I'm going to show you guys just how many types of fuels you can use. We'll start that process here inside with things that you can use inside. And that's one of the keys of this stove is that it is an emergency stove and it is a wood stove, but you can use it indoors in an emergency. I think it's great to have that flexibility. We can use a couple of different types of fuel to do that. So first off, we'll talk about solid fuel. We can do 
Sterno. Now Sterno is super easy to find, okay? It's safe to use indoors. It's pretty much designed to do that. It is just an alcohol-based fuel. To use it, I recommend you put at the very bottom the last holes. That's what's worked best for me. You can pop your sterno right in there and it just lays on top. If you don't, you know, it could theoretically fall. So if you wanted, you could put the solid fuel plate, okay, right on top. But you really don't have to if you're careful. It'll fit right on there, no problem at all. Now you are going to want to use your cross stand with this. And we're going to christen these brand new cross stands with some alcohol. Again, you want to just put it on and that allows you to put it right over the top. Very simple. Just light this up. Can't get any easier. You can see how simple this flame pattern is. Very simple way to put direct, safe heat to the bottom of your pan. Once again, when we're talking about an emergency stove, keeping three or four cans of Sterno in the house is about as simple and cheap as it gets, and it lets you use this thing indoors to do some cooking. And you don't just have to use Sterno, and this isn't really covered on the promo information from firebox stove, but if you get one of these Trangia uh, gel burners, okay, and I think this actually works better than Sterno. Because this is designed to work with the Trangia, anything that has the Trangia's dimensions like this will fit perfectly right in there, just like that. And this is probably, you know, you have to decide how high you want it up. I'm actually going to move it up one to the highest position. And I think you'll see that the flames from this are much better and much more powerful than Sterno. Uh, it's just a op more open uh, design for the actual burner. Let's add some alcohol. I just used this um, Swiss fire gel. Okay, you can, I got this huge tub off Amazon. It lasts a long time. Won't put tons in here, but just put a little bit. And we'll light this thing up. Super simple, can't get any easier but it is a wider flame, as you can see, and it really works better, in my opinion, than Sterno. So you don't have to carry Sterno. Get yourself one of these Trangia gel burners. They're super inexpensive. I don't remember how much they cost, less than $10. Uh, you could probably come up with your own, but ultimately, this one's pretty simple and pretty cheap, and it fits this design perfectly. So another option is just regular gel fuel. We're gonna keep the positioning pins at that exact level and we're gonna use this fuel plate, and it is exactly what it says. It is a, a fuel plate, and you can put any kind of fuel. We're gonna put a piece of solid fuel right here, which is Esbit fuel. Once again, this is showing the flexibility of using this stove indoors, and I think that's a pretty awesome thing to remember. You don't just have to use it outdoors, you can use it indoors. Makes a huge difference when you are in a survival situation. If you're not familiar with solid fuel, most of them are hexamine based. This is traditional Esbit. You can also buy a very nice product from a company called Expedition Research, very similar product. But you can see the degree of heat that comes off this. Every time I test solid fuel, I'm always just very impressed with the ability of the solid fuel to keep up in bullet tests with other types of fuel. Certain fuels like gel fuels or say for example the fire dragon fuel wouldn't work in this situation because it is alcohol based and it will ooze and ooze right down through the grates, uh, the holes in this grate. So you want to use a solid fuel like the hexamine. Again thinking about preparedness, buy yourself a pack of Esbit fuel. It basically lives forever. It doesn't really expire and uh, it does have a little bit of a funny smell so just keep it inside of a Ziploc bag. Uh, once you're around it for a while, you kind of get used to it. But nonetheless, look at this thing just go into town. You can adjust the level just a little bit. You can use this with or without the um, cross stand. The benefit of the cross stand is it opens it up. It allows more air. And we'll talk more about that when we use uh, actual wood products outside. It's designed that you can limit the air in multiple ways. And we'll discuss that in detail a little down the road. But if you're looking for an easy way to cook indoors, safely check out solid fuel you can definitely use it with the firebox scout now steve at firebox has always been a fan like many of us of the trangia spirit burner and most of his products are designed to use it he makes sure that the spacing of his support bars fit the trangia perfectly this one is no different as you can see right there i will also add 
that you can pretty effectively use the simmer ring. That's really important. You can open the simmer ring all the way up pretty much, or you can close it way down and you can use it right inside of the scalp. Now something that's really cool as well that some people may not think about is the options you have as far as which alcohol burners you want to use, and that's because you have this adjustable fire grate. Aside from the Trangia, many people have the Evernew Titanium. Now, this doesn't fit really, I mean it fits, okay, but it easily falls through, all right? So if you wanted to use something like this, are you out of luck? You're absolutely not. All you have to do is move this down, I'd say probably about the middle position. Put your adjustable fuel grate in there. Just set it right on top. Very simple. Once you add the cross stand, it will have about an inch of space between the bottom of the pot. But if you want it a little lower, look, move it up and down. You're able to move it in about half inch increments. So pretty simple. If you wanna use something like the Tokes siphon stove, if you happen to have the Tokes siphon stove and you don't wanna invest in a Transia, I don't know why you wouldn't want to, but nonetheless, if you want to, you can also use something super dead simple like the Kojin stove. And just a tip for you guys, it can be kind of a pain to pull that grate out. Just pull this part way out and lean it up like that and you're good to go. I would put this Kojin all the way up top, as high as you can get it. If you've never seen the Kojin stove from Trail Designs, can't get any simpler, it's just a little puck. Put it in there and you can see it's just underneath and it'll be right about an inch from it once you add the cross stand. We got the Trangia right back in there. Add just a little bit of fuel to show you guys. Light it up. Can't see it good, can you? So let's turn the lights out. And there you go. And it will pick up steam here. Very quickly bloom, just like that. Absolutely perfect setup. You can have the, um, the stove at this level. I, I, I put it at this level more for y'all to be able to see the flame pattern. It is at the top level. I would recommend you put it at the second level. I think that's the best location for the Transgia to work. Uh, optimally. But the cool thing is with that adjustable fire grate, you are not limited to just a Transgia. You can use almost any alcohol stove you want. You just have to make sure that it is not designed for the pot to sit directly on top of it. Uh, so for example, the cat can stove, you really wouldn't want to use that here, even though it's a great stove, because it really loses efficiency and burns through the fuel quickly if you don't have the pot directly on top of the actual stove, kind of pressurizing the system. Now, one of the safest and easiest ways to use a stove indoors is with a gas canister. You can, you can safely do that. You want to have some ventilation, but we use um, natural gas or propane inside. It's not a major issue. You want to make sure, of course, that you have ventilation. Like I said, you don't want carbon monoxide to, uh, to build up. But especially in this particular setting, you can use a canister stove safely, whether it be on a, on a balcony or back porch away from the weather, etc. Now, Transia sells propane stoves, or isobutane stoves, I should say, that fit uh, the diameter or the specifications of the stove itself. Now, I have kind of a knockoff version right here from the company Boolin. Um, I don't use this a lot, so purchasing a really expensive one never made much sense. And initially, I thought, well, this is going to work perfect. We'll just, you know, slide this through the bottom here, right? Give us a place to put our fuel line and we would just pop it on, right? Should fit the same dimensions. Problem is it really doesn't. It does not fit well. And I was like, well, that's, that's not good. But what I found was if you just move one of these two to an inside position. So we're actually gonna to have to lower this down one. So there you go, one will be on the far outside position uh, over here, and this one is just on the inside position. And this thing pops in perfectly. Now let's say you don't have that stove, you don't want to spend the money on it. Well basically what you need to do is find a remote canister stove that will fit inside. I have this one here, it's a kind of a no-name brand, I still have not reviewed it yet. But one of the things that's really nice about it is that even with its feet open, it has a very, very small footprint. So just pop this through here, 
fully open and you can put it just like that and it just fits on the bottom and works perfectly. Now in the end what Firebox is really all about is wood burning stoves and wood burning products. So let's take this thing outside and I'll show you guys several products you can use that are wood based to cook in an emergency. Now one nice thing that Steve always does is he thinks a little bit farther ahead. He's like a lot of us where he thinks, okay, this is a great little stove and this is a great little carrying case, but what if I want to carry it a different way? Well, he thought about that. So if you get all your parts and pieces here, we'll go ahead and put it inside of our nylon carry case. If you get yourself, which I actually picked up a brand new one. I had a 16 centimeter billy pot, but it did not have the firebox latches so that it stays nice and tight like that. I bought it off Amazon, so I went ahead and picked one up uh, for this stove. So if you take this out, you can fit your firebox right on top absolutely perfectly. Now you can't put this on top, but it fits perfectly just like that. And let me back y'all out a little bit. If you want, you can get one of these awesome, which I did, because I'm a sucker, one of these awesome uh, 
nylon carrying bags that holds a kit up top. And let's say you want to put together a little kit. You want to carry, say for example, a little kettle like this. This is the Eagle Products smaller kettle. You just put this right on top. You can carry this with food on top or whatever. It allows you to put the handle up like this, sit it straight up. It's not small, it's not compact, but it fits everything super nicely. But the fact that you can easily carry this in a complete kit like this with a large volume cooking pot and plenty of room up here for extras, oil, utensils, anything else you need. This is a great way to put together an emergency kit that can serve you pretty much anywhere. Now I do want to show you guys, I talked a little bit and I've done several videos about dry baking. And dry baking is where basically you're able to take something like this zebra pot and you can put something like that and put a small pot in there, a small pan in there, and you can bake bread, you can bake cookies, you can do whatever you want. Now the problem is if you put it on top of this stove, it falls right off, right? So that's what I talked about earlier. If you get your crossbars and you put them in just like this, put them nice and close to the edge, you can put this right on top. It gives you a secure way to hold your zebra pot. It's not going anywhere. You can see, I mean, I'm pushing on it and it's nice and stable, just like that. Really, really nice touch. And because those cross stands lock into place and they fit perfectly across the span and they lock into place, you can just pull them out to unlock them like that. And they really are in place pretty good. You're able to safely dry bake with this kit. So that is a pretty good look at the flexibility of fuel options that makes this an absolutely perfect emergency stove. As we promised, let's discuss some pros and cons and we'll start with the pros. It is economically priced and it's designed for kind of the novice fire starter uh, out there. You want somebody that's going to be using this for an emergency, so you want to make it very easy to use, and that's something Steve worked really hard on and you can tell. It has pretty much the ultimate fuel flexibility. We've already covered that in detail. You can also limit the airflow in two important ways. First, on the bottom, you can put it straight into the lid, cover up those bottom holes, which limits the amount of oxygen gets to the bottom. When you're using accelerated fuels like solid fuel or the fire puck, any of those things you want to limit that, it'll allow it to burn longer and have a more consistent, even temperature when you're cooking. Now you also can limit the airflow on top. You can put your pot directly on the top without any gap at all, or you can put it on top of that cross stand. That cross stand kind of increases the amount of oxygen flowing through and will kind of turbo boost that flame and give you more heat than if you put it right on top. As far as cons go, well, you can't fold it flat like you can the other two very popular firebox stoves, but again, that's not the point. Another con is that you can't fit a, uh, a very small pot on top. Now you can when you use the cross stand, but if you're wanting to really limit the airflow up top, you can't use something like the Toke 750 or even the ever new 900 milliliter mug pot. Doesn't quite fit on top, it's a little bit too wide, but you can just use the cross stand, but it is a con that it doesn't hold the smallest pots, which we very frequently use when we're out there on the go. It's a dirty stove, there's no way around it. You're using a lot of these uh, fuels, you use the fire puck, produces a lot of soot and it really can get pretty nasty. It's just part of what it is. There's really no way around it, it just is what it is, especially down here in Louisiana when we use kind of wet wood, you're gonna get a lot of soot and it gets everywhere. It's also not the sturdiest stove. I think some people will feel it and say, gosh, this doesn't feel very sturdy. And there's no doubt that if you're not careful with it, you can probably crush it pretty easily. Now, when you put the top and the bottom on, it gives it a lot of rigidity. So I would definitely pack it with those top two lids. If you're wanting to save weight, then don't put the bottom lid on, put the top lid on. The bottom, of course, has that solid piece of stainless steel at the bottom, so it's not gonna warp as easily as the top. If you want to save a little weight, make sure you put that top on. If you don't, you could crush it in your bag and cause some issues. Now, in an emergency, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. You want to have as much flexibility as you can. You don't want to be limited, for example, to one fuel source. Get yourself a couple of fire pucks, get a bag of wood pellets, put it inside of a nice dog food container, put that into your preps, 
keep some heat in the yellow bottle with an alcohol stove. This gives you a lot of different ways to cook on your stove besides using it for its kind of intended purpose, which is out with debris from the yard. But in an emergency situation, keep your fuel options open. You also don't want to be limited by cooking only outdoors. Of course, if you're going to be burning wood, you're going to want to be outside. But this stove allows you to use it indoors as well. You can use a gas canister stove. You can use an alcohol stove inside. You can use alcohol gel inside. You want to have some ventilation, but you can safely cook. Even in an emergency situation in some of these big city apartments, you can definitely use these safely. Out on a balcony, for example, safely use an alcohol stove. You have to be smart about it, of course. I wouldn't do it unless it was a very big emergency and you have to follow your local codes and everything. But in an emergency situation, I think if you're trying to stay alive, using something like that is very beneficial. And by having that flexibility, you don't just have to cook outside, you can cook inside as well and do it safely. Lastly, you don't want to be limited on how you can cook. With this stove, it's not just about boiling water as fast as you can to rehydrate uh, meals, for example. You can also fry with it, cook with it. You can also bake with it. Now, I know a lot of you are excited to get your hands on this stove. and You've probably already pledged to the Kickstarter campaign. If you have it and you want to pick one up, go ahead and pledge to the Kickstarter. You can also go to Firebox Stove and just order it, pre-order it on their website. Probably sure you can tell that I'm pretty excited about this stove. I think it is a great addition to the stoving community, you might say. And looking at it as an emergency stove is such a nice thing. You know, we, we talk about backpacking all the time, and don't get me wrong, if you're looking at, for example, the five inch or even the nano, you can use them on multiple fuels, and it does a lot the same things, but not for the same price. And ultimately, when you're looking at a $20 stove, and if you add some uh, extras that will really help out, $30, $30 for an emergency stove, pretty freaking good deal. I think that's why so many people are excited. Remember that about this stove. It is a budget emergency stove, and that's what you're gonna get. But unlike other budget-minded stoves out there, it is truly a jack of all trades. I think you saw that today on our review. If you have any questions, make sure you leave it down in the comments below. Steve also is pretty active on social media. You can reach out to him on Instagram. He posts all the time. If you have questions about it, just shoot him his way. For total transparency, I will tell y'all, as you know, Steve sent me this. He did not ask me to do a specific review or to do anything. I offered to do that if I felt that the product was worth it and I definitely do. I know you guys out there are like me and you like Firebox, you like supporting companies like Firebox. That's why they currently have $120,000 pledged to this Kickstarter or so at the time of this filming. That is pretty amazing and an amazing amount of support from the community for this awesome company. I have videos on the other Firebox products and I'll leave links down below. Also gonna give you guys, if you made it to the end of this video, give you a little tidbit, I picked up a new Firebox 5-inch titanium off the Kickstarter. I was right there at the beginning, paid 75 bucks for it, and it will be part of the giveaways that I do when I get to 50,000 subscribers. We're about 45,000 right now, so when we get to 50,000, we are gonna give away some awesome gear, including someone will win a titanium 5-inch Firebox. Not sure if you guys are aware, I have an entire playlist on stoves, so make sure you check those out down below. All kinds of stoves on there, so check that out. Do me a favor, guys. If you like the video, do a few things for me. Hit the thumbs up. Really helps spread things across YouTube. Make sure you hit the subscription button. Hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know. We're starting to do more live streams. And if you hit that notification, you'll be notified when I go live. Really appreciate you guys checking out this video. I know a lot of people, as I said, are excited about this stove. I think you will be very happy when you get it in the mail eventually. Steve freaking added more cool stuff. He's putting out this... Um, uh, pizza stone, uh, which I added to my order, and yeah, you know, just all kinds of stuff. Always innovative and cool gear from Firebox. As always, guys, I appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Stay tuned for more videos soon. <music>